are listening to WHOA Podcast, coming to you from Gainesville, Florida. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the WHOA GNV Podcast, the podcast bringing you businesses and individuals that make you go, whoa! I always like that. The last few woes, like, just, you know. Actually, they make, I want they make you, you. Let's just change things up. You do it, right? Do do the intro. Hold on. You got here. the shirt on? No, it's right there. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, yeah, right here. Do the. Do, let's, uh, we just want to see if I can actually do the intro. Did you say good morning? No, I said hello. Okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the WHOA GNV Podcast. The podcast bringing you businesses and individuals that make you go whoa. Yeah, well, leave that to me for now. <laughs> I, that was my best Colin impression. No, that was good. That was good. Hey, I am your host, Colin Austin, and my co-host is a vlog superstar, local celebrity, trivia challenger, and gator guru, Michael Dees. And intro dud, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should add, add that to the next one, please. <laughs> nah. You guys, hey. What's up, my like, man? What's going on, man? How's it, How's everything? Dude, everything's going well. It's been, it's been crazy. What, what are we? Uh, we're September, end of September now? I know, man. Episode 73. Three. That's nice, yeah. This is crazy. Hopefully by the time this actually hits, we'll start getting a little bit cooler weather. Maybe fall will start coming in, but yeah. probably also not. No, we'll definitely see. not. Yeah. Hey, I want to, uh, before we get things rolling, I'm gonna give some love to our sponsors. They were on the episode last week. Joe and Joyce Reese. <laughs> Joe Joe and Joyce Reese. I want to say, I wanted to be like Reese's because right. like in their thing, they're like, it's like Reese's it phonetic, peanut butter. Right. Yeah. Like, it's like Reese's peanut butter cups. <laughs> Um, they they were on the show last week, like I said, and and they are today's podcast sponsor. Thank you to the T Shop for sponsoring us. You guys can find them at the T Shops. That's with an S. The T Shops dot com and on Instagram at underscore the T Shop. Um, they are a local print shop that specializes in custom apparel and promotional products. They are Gainesville's one stop shop for custom apparel and more. And you guys. Check out these awesome Whoa GNV shirts. These are brand new. If you're listening to the audio podcast, you need to go look at the video podcast right now because we got t-shirts on. Mine is hashtag GNV B-I-Z for Gainesville biz. Mike's got the Whoa, the traditional, which I'm gonna call it traditional. Try to make this face earlier. (laughs) (laughs) The Whoa GNV podcast. Oh, and wait, hold on, there's one more. Yeah, you gotta gotta get this one, this one's great. This one's legit. Okay, it's got the little uh, emoji con there, like on the front, right? Our little guy. And then on the back says, bringing you businesses. Can you get this? Is it in there, James? Bringing you businesses and individuals that make you go, whoa. <laughs> Quote on the back. You guys, that now they promised me, I'm just telling you, they promised me that by the time this episode airs, the web store will be up on wognv.com, that's w-h-o-a-g-n-v.com. You can go buy these shirts, I have no idea how much they cost, but when you (laughs) buy them, when you buy them, everybody, you support the podcast. We've talked about how much this production costs and the money will help us keep making sure that, it's just gonna fund it. We're just gonna keep making sure that we can continue to make these episodes, which I'm like stoked about and the shirts are amazing. They're so so comfy too. (laughs) mad, mad love to the tea shop for printing those for us. Uh, I'm super, super grateful and support our sponsors, guys. Uh, without them, that none of this is possible. So, but I got, I got a couple more things. Okay, Cause remember, more. remember my nonprofit shout outs and stuff. Right. So, so I'm doing this right now. So I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to bust through these real quick. Uh, hey, you guys listen up. Foster Florida um, is doing, they're doing a fundraiser called Make Room, okay? This is gonna be on October 17th at 6.30 p.m. This is an eye-opening experience into the foster care system from the perspective of those caught up in it. Um, Tables and tickets are available for purchase at fosterflorida.org forward slash events. Lacey and Christy and their families are just incredible people. I love them all so very much. You guys support Foster Florida. Again, that's October 17th at 6.30 p.m. Um, the, another one, we had the seventh annual Kickin Martial Arts Tournament benefiting Stop Children's Cancer. This is Saturday, October 18th at Gainesville Health and Fitness Center. Registration starts at 8 a.m., but the opening ceremony is at 10 a.m. Spectators are absolutely invited to come. Um, my man, Larry Hartfield, 
dude, he's such a great guy. He has poured his heart into this thing for years, so hit him up for more information. They do this over at Gainesville Health and Fitness Center, so shout out to Joe Cerulli for all of his help in this as well. But you can check it out at Kickin, that's K-I-C-K-I-C-K-I-N-I-T, Gainesville.com. I wanted to make sure that people understood that there wasn't kicking a G. It, yeah. yeah, that there wasn't a G in the in, in kicking. So kicking it Gainesville.com. Um, or you can call them at 352-870-9575. And the last one for today. Rose the Rose Gala for the American Cancer Society benefiting breast cancer research and prof- and programming, as well as our local Hope Lodge. This is October 18th at 7 p.m. Look, you can go to Larry's event in the day and then later that night, go to the Rose Gala. The nonprofit this, weekend. The, exactly, the Rose Gala is October 18th at 7 p.m. at Santa Fe River Ranch. Um, they got Taste Elegant Catering there, Imperial Products, Legacy Events, 119. <laughs> I feel like Lindsay and Brandon Higgins probably get more shout outs on this podcast <laughs> than anybody. But Legacy Events will be there. Our friends from Heart Happy Films will be there. Um, and they're all going to be contributing to the success of this event. And of course, you know, Kara Winslow and Lindsay Higgins are a big part of that. And uh, so, you know, guys, I love Gainesville so much. These nonprofits do so much. Please support them. Go to these events and, um, and help them all out. And, you know, just, uh, you know, th- thank you to all of them and everything that they do, Absolutely. the hard work. It's a lot of volunteer work and um, to raise money for a lot of incredible causes. And I just love to see the heart that is in Gainesville. So thank you guys so very much. And I am ready to get into the Let's show. Do it. Are you ready? I'm ready. Hi. Today on the show. Sports. <laughs> Mike's, Mike's always, anytime we got sports stuff going on, you're like super excited. <laughs> I love it. Today on the show, we have Jamil Mohammed, owner of the Mealy Pops Shop, a local hobby shop here in Gainesville with national presence. The Mealy Pops Shop primarily deals in sports and gaming cards, but sports mill, but Hold on, the Mealy Pop Shop primarily deals in sports and gaming cards, but sports memorabilia, comics, coins, Funko Pops, and other collectibles are also up their alley. Jamil, what is up, man? What is up, guys? You guys had an intro there. I'm telling I you know, what, you had a was, lot. <laughs> it was a little bit. Yeah, we're gonna have to like shorten that down a little bit. A little, <laughs> a little, a little, no, bit. you did well. You yeah, did well. I'm glad it, to be here. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, man, oh, for being I'm, here. I'm excited. So it's funny because like I've been like watching your stuff on Instagram for for so long, and I I don't know. He just has a business that like fascinates me. You know, I think like when I think about like, and, and I'll be honest, like I never as a kid never really got into playing cards and that kind of thing. Like you know I just sports cards and like I just it wasn't my thing but like I'm just fascinated by the industry as a whole yeah and this like resurgence that I'm seeing I feel like it kind of is it's almost like this nostalgia thing yeah. from like back in the day and it's like and now it, I don't know I feel like it's like coming back <laughs> and like full force and I'm just I'm just super interested to dive into the details of you know of your business and um yeah, I mean, you've seen our you've seen our show, so you know the format. So let's like just take us back, man. Take us back. Yeah. Like, what's what's your story? <laughs> yeah. So, um, like many people, um, probably like Mike back in the '90s. You know, um, I'm a child of the '90s. You know, I grew up around collecting collecting something, and it was usually at that time it was like baseball cards, right? That was a big thing. Baseball cards were huge in the '80s and '90s, and I grew up in. St. Louis, Missouri, outside of outside St. Louis, a little place called O'Fallon. And I fell in love with the St. Louis Cardinals as a little boy. So they were my team. Um, I followed them, you know, as a first grader could in 1990, whatever that was like, uh, with no digital presence at all, right? So all you have is TV and maybe radio, and maybe you get to go to a, the Bush Stadium and see a, a baseball game. So I was really captivated by that. And these things came out, I remember so vividly as a little boy, uh, in the elementary school lunch line, they were passing out Ozzie Smith, Ray Langford, and Lee Smith baseball cards, and they were free. And there was something going on, some promotion. And I kept those cards. Uh, <laughs> I kept those cards. Am I throwing names already out there? And you're just like, uh, it's okay, it's all right. Yeah. Um, Ozzie Smith sorry. was one of my grandfather's favorite players of all time, the Wizard of Oz. The Wizard, the Wizard, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. So anyway, long story short is, uh, 
it captured me as a little boy. And just like a lot of people, collected cards, collected stuff, and you did that through the 90s. You got them at card shops, you got them at flea markets, flea markets you got them yeah. at the store, you got them uh, trading at the playground, you know, you did all these things, you beat up the other kid, you took his cards, or he beat you up and took your cards. Um, so that's what kind of went down in the 90s. And that was just what captivated a lot of kids. Uh, I'm sure you, you had collections, I meet people all the time. And it's so funny that you said what you said about the resurgence. It's exactly what you said, but mixed with the digital medium, right? And now we have this element where someone can take a, a device anywhere they go. They can buy and sell. They can uh, they can trade with somebody in Zimbabwe if they wanted to. Sports cards, you know, and they can deal with anything that's collectible. Um, but the resurgence has come back very strong. And I would say right now in 2019, September, we're probably at some levels the same way we were at the 90s, and just in a very different way. So I'm really excited because we've only opened up the brick and mortar location. Uh, we're sitting in about a year and a half now. We've, we got through our first year, things are good, the lights are still on and there's toilet paper in the bathroom. So um, <laughs> we're still doing all right. Um, but uh, I'm just I'm just really stoked to see where this is going, going to, like where this is going to go. I, I think sports cards, collectibles that are cards are actually infants in terms of the collectible world compared to comics and stamps and uh, coins and other things that you see. So so uh, it's really exciting times right now in in, in this business, and uh, can't wait to talk to you guys about it. Yeah, so I mean, you, so you've only had the brick and mortar place for a year and a half. Not even. Yeah, it's less. It's, we've, we're we're up to uh, June uh, 9th, two thousand eighteen, and then we had our grand opening the twenty third. Percy Harvin, I'm sure you guys know that name. Uh, he did our grand opening with us. I can share a little bit more about Percy too. How he's been really cool uh, in the store and his nonprofit. But um, yeah, I I, I started kind of like what people are doing now. I was side hustling. And 2000, you know, I collected all the way up until high school and then early 2000s, got out of it, got too cool for cards. Uh, got into college, went here, of course, go Gators. Uh, 03, graduated in 08 with a master's degree. Got a job, was getting money and realized, all right, I have some disposable income. Got back into the kind of card world. And I started doing just the side hustle thing, uh, the eBay life, the the Craigslist life, you know, all these things, buying and selling collections. And it just expounded. Well, just like out of your home? Or like, yeah, just yes. out of my home. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was doing it. Um, my, my lovely wife, Meredith, she put up with it in the beginning. Mm -hmm. I wasn't really sure what I was doing in the beginning. I was just buying everything and reselling it. I was making profits. I remember this crazy store. I went to a storage unit. A guy had a video game store, his entire inventory in this massive uh, storage unit. And I just wound up buying it. I didn't know a lot about video games at that time. I knew like growing up Nintendo and these things. I just bought it and that was a huge risk and I'm glad my, my wife is still with me, but you know, we took over, <laughs> we took, we took, we put this, we put this, we made this room and it became the eBay room, uh, literally. And uh, I just grinded that room. I was working uh, at the hospital for my degree and I just fell in love with just kind of this idea of the flip culture, uh, seeing how you could really tap into the nostalgia, like you said, and how it like really, like re resonated in this town, like people just love, there's so much energy in this town and there's so much like just, the, the everyone has a pulse on culture, right? So like yeah. everything that we grew up with, uh, it, how it's all morphed and changed and, and, and the way people look at collectibles, the way people look at things that, you know, they just put up, you know, look in here, we have little little scooters here, we have little gnomes in here, we have, you know, things that we have, <laughs> right? I see a gnome <laughs> He's over like there. pointing out our gnomes in there. Yeah, yeah, so <laughs> like, what gnome? <laughs> so like those kind of things, yeah, right? Gnome. There's a he's a scooter gnome, right? Yeah, so that's awesome. um I love that gnome. <laughs> we, uh, I'm sure there's a, there's, if you find, if you went online, you probably find people who collect scooter gnomes. You know, there's something for everything as well. And I, I think that collecting just taps into something innate with people and they love it and they love to have stuff. I loved your post the other day. You put about, it's not about having stuff. And I really agree with that. But I do think that there is an innate element, I think, of especially collecting sports cards, kids and, and, and even grown adults. It teaches them responsibility, teaches them how to like care for something, how to understand value and worth in a market, oh, yeah. which is actually so key. And I don't think people really get that uh, in 2019. Uh, they see something online, but they don't really dig a little deeper, you know, F figuring out what stuff is really worth. So like, why did you decide to open up a retail store? Why did it feel like right to like open yeah. up an actual store? So I kept kept kind of a pulse on the market and I just realized at this time like cards were hot, you know. Um, I, I love my job, I love, love what I do. I serve in the VA and I work with veterans, um, but I love balance too in life. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs, I think you find that is, there's a balance of, of life and, and, and that cubicle job or that nine to five just doesn't resonate very well, right? You know, and so um, I worked there part time and, I, and I, we opened this, this store and I'm very thankful to God, like my wife's been able to leave her, her work and she's full time now in the store and we have two employees and uh, the internet world of eBay, um, Facebook, Instagram, like I, I knew it. So 
we were we we already had a customer base. We had a brand, uh, the Mealy Pops shop, or Mealy Pops was our old nickname of mine, and it just resonated. So uh, I realized that the, the timing was right, and man, I, business has been booming. Uh, it's been growing. There's been a ton of just new collectors. I love it. Kids that come through the store, dads bringing their kids, moms bringing their kids, and it's just kind of a really cool family atmosphere um, that we have going on almost every week. Cool, Mike. I know you got like a million questions, <laughs> being the sports fanatic that you are. He, I mean, he literally just blew my mind a minute ago when he talked about collecting as a kid and how it teaches you lessons of how to care for things and find worth because like, I absolutely had a ton of cards. Some of them that I would yell at my sister for bending the corners of. <laughs> we had the protective sleeves and everything. And as a kid, like I, I, I just knew that that was what you were supposed to do, but like I'd never really thought I was being taught a lesson by having them, you know? <laughs> yeah. But it's crazy because I remember uh, shout out to my brother because he's the one that like put this culture into me. But we we would buy the Becketts every year. They oh, yeah. Look up the the worth of your car and see did you get one that was worth <laughs> two bucks? Did you get one that was worth three bucks? Yeah. Um, the arrows. You had to look for the arrows. Remember? Yes, absolutely. And and there you know you knew all the the different like it was tops, it was upper deck. You knew all the different card makes and everything. But then I also remember what's crazy is you talk about the digital culture now is how big like say fantasy football is sure. these days. Yeah. And I remember taking all of our <laughs> cards, collecting them together, shuffle, not shuffling them probably because they were still you know nice cards, but like you would literally just draw from them and make a fantasy football team out of it. And you would literally go to the newspaper. I'm dating myself. You literally go to the newspaper and find the stats and then jot them down and see how you did against y your brother's team or something like that. And we played old school pen and paper fantasy football that way with trading cards. How old are you? <laughs> I'm I'm much younger than I appear by telling that story. That's I'm so dope. I love yeah. hearing that. Like that's like that's the roots, right? Of like this betting culture and fantasy football and everything that we know, right? Like that's the roots of it. People going to newspapers and like just grinding stats. You know, can you imagine doing that with baseball? Like I every did single day. You know what yeah. I mean? Football is like football is like the biggest one, right? But baseball is a huge thing, and like just every single day checking the newspaper and ESPN wouldn't wouldn't update their platform fast enough on fantasy baseball. So I literally go to the stats and watch baseball tonight to see how my people were doing yeah. you know it was it was wild but it was yeah. definitely a culture that I grew up with uh and it's part of the reason why I became such a data head and, yeah. and sports fan anyways because I just loved having that hobby yeah uh but it's so crazy to think about just the fact that I was being taught a lesson with caring for the cards and I didn't even know about it but I think I mean I know this is now we're getting into like the nerdy side but like the analytical <laughs> side of it right like yeah you know like like the analytical oh. element of like looking at stats understanding percentages like there's even like you can learn math, you know, from baseball exactly. cards and, you know, with kids collecting like numbers and sorting and organizational skills. Um, I'm a big, I'm an OT. So like a uh, visual spatial uh, hand, like kids who may have, uh, have, have had some kids who are you know, autistic spectrum that come in and the shine of cards really gets them really focused. And so like there's therapeutic elements to, you know, collecting that I've seen. So I, I, I can see that element growing now and now teaching kids what I'm learning is <laughs> There are kids who have ten thousand, fifteen thousand, twenty thousand dollar collections they bring to the store. I was just at the national event, and they're eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. They are side hustling, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like in this digital platform age, and they do it all on their phones. It's just it's a wild world. Their PayPal account, I got twelve thousand in my PayPal. I'm like, you're eight. Like go and watch Pokemon, you know, or what, <laughs> like or whatever it is. And these kids, I mean, they they really understand it, and it's it's a cool thing, like to learn and to teach. I think a generation that is is consumed with data, and instead of us being the old hats and saying, "Man, get off your phone," like embrace that and teach them life skills that they're gonna you know use later on. Absolutely, That's super interesting. Because you know it's funny you think about like when we were kids like parents parents you know if you sit, t t I mean not my parents specifically <laughs> just in case they're listening but like in general I think parents are like oh if you sit too close to that TV screen like yeah. you're gonna go blind yeah. or like yeah. you know you're gonna rot you're gonna rot your mind being in front of that <laughs> screen all day or playing those those Nintendo games all day or, or whatever it is and I mean that's that's the reality I mean that's the world that we're living in and right. the fact that they can right. like learn these skills on these devices um, is, is super interesting. Do you think that influence is, like where's the influence coming with these young kids that are getting into this and they have $12,000 in their PayPal account? I mean, is it because their parents were into it as kids? Or like, or where are they, where are they learning the skill set? Because I'll be, sure. like I, I have a 10 year old and a six year old, yeah, like yeah. 10 and six year old boys and uh, like they're not really into this stuff. I mean, they do have some like Pokemon cards sure, that some sure. friends like gave them, yeah, yeah. but they're not like into the the collector side of it. And, and honestly, like for, for me as like, a 
businessman entrepreneur yep. i would i would actually love for my kids to kind of get into sure. that kind of thing because sure. i feel like we could teach them yeah you know and i mean really like these things a, a lot of it's like looked at as investments sure like you're like sure buying these cars, holding on to them, selling and reselling them yeah. for more money later down the road, right? Yeah. So, I mean, just- You got it. I mean, you're just, you're, you're just, a car collector at the end of it. I know, like, just those, like, investor, lessons. You know, that's the part that excites me because I understand the business yeah. side of it, Yeah. right? But, uh, like, my my kids don't really, haven't shown any sort of natural interest. So, the kids that are out there, where are they getting this interest from? Yeah, I, I think there's probably multiple answers to that. I would say eBay has become a world that people learn how to buy and sell very quickly, right? Uh, I don't like my video game anymore, so they sell it on eBay or Mercari or Craigslist or whatever that element is for kids now, right? So there's that whole digital platform where the buy and sell mediums. Amazon has, I think, every kid knows what Amazon is, right? I have uh, kids who sometimes order on their grandma's phones uh, Pokemon cards, and then I wind up getting the grandma calling me, and I'm like, you know, your your son just or your grandson just ordered a ten thousand dollar or a thousand dollar Pokemon card, whatever it is. Now, you know what I mean. So they they know how to do it. They know how to do these things uh, very quickly. So I don't know if it's necessarily where are they learning. I think they've already learned it, and I think they already know how to access the medium very quickly. Um, so I think it's more along the lines of are they just interested in it, you know? Um, which is scary to think. Well, right? have, you, have you had to deal with those like with kids buying stuff when they don't have the money? Yeah, definitely. Like, I mean, because yeah. I like yeah. I think back to like when we were selling like the like little, <laughs> little gas powered scooters and stuff, and, stuff yeah. and like you know auctions, eBay auctions were getting sold, and people, you know, I get an email from a parent. Oh, I can't. I'm so sorry, but my kid yeah. placed the order for this, <laughs> and he doesn't have the money to buy that it. We're not happen. buying yeah. it. Yeah. Like, well, for your podcast audience, I'm sure there is a lot of people out there who do sell on platforms or e-platforms or e-commerce, and that happens all the time. They're probably just sitting there like hallelujah right now because like the amount of uh, fickle business that's happening on that scale is actually becoming very detrimental and eBay is actually losing a lot of business. There's other platforms that are coming out sidelining and paralleling eBay because there's so much of that riffraff that's happening. Um, so it's not just the kid, it may be people who just wanna get, uh, who wanna, like for example, I'll give you an example. Last week, Zion Williamson, do you know that name? Mm -hmm. Okay, he's all right, Colin and I are on the same page. We're vibing <laughs> with Zion. Okay, Zion came out, they first came out, Pernini came out with the first Zion autograph cards and they were in box and packs and the first one got pulled put on eBay and it got bid up to a million dollars or hundred thousand dollars in like six hours now they were all fake bids but then what that does to a market is it it distills and it, it, it makes a confusing market for a car that's really worth about two or three thousand but unfortunately you have this like influx that happens so there are people who will like just bid up something screenshot it and just be like look what I'm doing today if, you know for whatever points that is so there's this weird world out there that's that I try and teach people about where you got to understand kind of market influence market negativity things that are not real out there and, and really understanding not just one comp, but maybe 18 different comps to understand what a sale is of something. So that does happen all the time to answer your question. Okay, so the this was a new card. Came out last week, yeah, Wednesday. New card, so I mean, <laughs> where is it? it, it I feel like this can be very basic business questions or like, <laughs> but like, I mean, is it just simply supply and demand? There's only a certain amount of them released and like what, what does, yeah. you know, what, why isn't it a hundred thousand dollar card? Like you know, what, 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 what made it, what made it two to three thousand dollars? Sure. So hype is a big element, right? So Zion Williamson is supposed to be the next LeBron James. Everybody wants to say that he's not going to be, I don't think, but mm -hmm. he's a great player and he's incredible what he does. He's going to dunk on somebody this year and it's going to make everybody go what and tweet about it mm -hmm. and post about it. And you're going to see that video go viral like this. There's a hype element to sports cards no matter what. Week one of the NFL just passed. So Baker Mayfield was supposed to come out and be the next Joe Namath and he actually had a face plant. So now Baker Mayfield's kind of taking a dip in his stuff and Lamar Jackson's gone up. So these elements of hype are huge. Um, the other element is supply and demand. They make a limited run in cards. That's the difference between sports cards in 2019 and sports cards when Mike and I collected in 1991. They made millions and millions of cases. There was no internet. Nobody understood how many there were. And so there's just too much supply and not enough demand. Uh, I have buddies of mine that just literally throw those boxes away in fires now and they film it and they just laugh because there's so much of that. Mm. It is really crap. I mean, it is, it's what it is. Um, there's just, there's no use to it. But the cards now are limited and then they're they're maybe out of five or out of one or out of 10 or out of 99 or a short print. And so that really spikes the value and some of that stuff. That's why I tell people in their store, they come in, I'm like, you know, you could buy this box of Bowman baseball 
and pull a one of one card that's worth fifty thousand dollars? And they're like, no way. And I'm like, you could. If the card is in there, you could you could walk out of the store with that today. And that's what's happened, I think, and that's drew so many people back. The Mike Trout's in baseball, um, the uh, the basketball. It's been Luka Doncic this past mm-hmm. year, or the year before that. You know, maybe it was uh, Donovan Mitchell or Jason Tatum. Now it's of course Zion and uh, John Morant. So there's always these rookies that people are following, and they want the best card of. Uh, it's it's like a chase. It's like a Willy Wonka golden ticket in a way, right? Yeah. They're so how many of it. those would they will they actually make? So there are, are one of ones that are like seen as that golden ticket. Sure. Where there's only one. There's out of five or ten, and they're all by brands. There's different brands of cards: Upper Deck Tops, mm-hmm. Panini. These are all brands that make them. Yep. Um, but not going into all the nitty gritty. But there are specific brands that have those kind of cards that people just chase after. So that was always the confusing thing about collecting. Then I thought was like you could have a. Barry Bonds, a Mark McGuire, somebody like that, that was a tops silver, whatever, I don't know. Yeah. And it was worth 10 cents. Right. And then you could have another Mark McGuire card, same <laughs> year, same uniform, different card, and it was worth a lot more money. Exactly. And yeah. it was just like, well, why is this one, it's not printed on gold, like why right. is this one more than this one? Usually, in that, in that era, it was by word of mouth and the Beckett magazines would say the print runs were less or they were more rare. Um, and I think that's with anything, right? The more rare something is, the more value you attain to it, you attest to it. Um, with cards now, we know that the, the the print runs are this, so we do know the rarity right off the bat. Before the products are even released, they, they know this. So the companies have done a good job with, I think, making and creating a buzz and a hype around cards. And uh, I just call it Zion Mania because in basketball, it's great for our shop. I'm probably gonna sell out of every basketball product for the next three months, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, just because of him. And he'll never play a minute in the NBA while, while you do. Right, I exactly. Mean, I'm not saying he won't play. Yeah, no, yeah, you know before he even plays. Before he even right? plays. And that's right. crazy to think, right? So, and it, just to bring back uh, just the idea of, like, you were talking about your kids with Pokemon. So, yep. I think it was two or three days ago, a card that could have been pulled out of a pack at Walmart or our store um, was graded. And that's another thing I can tell you a little bit about more is the grade cards now based on um, how mint they are on a scale of one to 10. And uh, a Charizard, so for this is all the kids out there, um, sold for $10,000 on eBay auction. It was paid for just recently. So that goes to show that there's a, a value to Pokemon. These are things that kids can collect and, and can resell. Um, now that was a perfect, it was a prime graded example, a 10 uh, highest out of it. But the base card of that sells for $800 right now. Like a kid can p- open that up a Pokemon pack and then actually have $800 in their hand, right? So like, crazy. it's crazy the market that has created, you know, with all of this, it's all cards, right? It's Pokemon, it's Yu-Gi-Oh, it's sports cards, it's non-sports cards, Marvel has cards too. So, I mean, it's, it's literally everything you, you can put your hands on and, and people well, what, consume it. Like, what's the likelihood of that happening though? Of a kid pulling one yeah. of those? Like, I mean, what are they gonna have to spend? If I, if I bring sure. my kid in there, they buy? Yeah, like that card, there's packs sell for like 12, 15 bucks and they could buy one and it's probably like one in every, uh, probably like four or 500 packs. Okay. So it's not necessarily unattainable, but again, it, it's one of those kind of odd things that you look at. Interesting. Yeah. So does something like when major things happen in sports, let's take like, all the stuff that's been happening with Antonio. Oh boy, Antonio Brown, for example. You did hear about what just happened. News broke today. Broke today no. There's Lost more. Podcast. There's even yeah. more there's news. More, there's if more. There's more news. Brand if new you, news. If you drafted Antonio Brown, you're not winning anything this season. Yeah, that's basically what's. The about Patriots to just lost ten million dollars. Yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Michael, news, fill us in. What, news, oh, let's hear it. Let's oh, yeah. hear it. Okay, go ahead. Tell like, what happened, like, what happened <laughs> he, quickly. He was <laughs> accused, and I'll say accused, of uh, sexually assaulting his trainer, and that just came out today. Okay. So <laughs> this guy. Okay. Um, so my question is, yeah. you know, I'm assuming there's Antonio Brown rookie cards, rookie cards, rookie autograph cards. What does that cards? do to the value of the cards? Anything? So it, it's a great study. The last 72 hours of him from leaving the Raiders, right? Probably dropping. I'm free. He's yeah, like literally, literally flying out of dro- his backyard. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Dropping 50, 75 percent of their value to being signed by the Patriots. Now going back to the original value, or maybe even doubling, and then. Now again, probably dropping. So in seventy-two hours, you could have seen literally a roller coaster ride on buying a card for fifty bucks, a hundred bucks, going to twenty, then back to a hundred, and then back to twenty over seventy-two hours. And that's literally the marketplace that we live in. It's like the stock market. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's the, all it's, these factors that are happening. Are, but here's the crazy thing about that. And sorry to interrupt. Is um, yeah, no, it's not regulated. And that's why I think so many people are drawn to it because there's no rules. It's just kind of everybody feels like they have their hand in it. They make trades with people. They grade cards. And that's what I think there's a lot of just everybody is is drawn to it, right? Gary V, uh, another guy who I'm sure you know. Uh, Dude, I saw, I saw that you were like, you have to like 
hang out with him at the sh- at the show, right? Yeah, the national convention. Yeah. So Gary V and I talk a little bit here and there about cards um, and some chat groups with him, and he is a very <laughs> you v- and me. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I said Gary V. Forget all the the baseball players. Gary V. I got Colin now. Um, he's he's a very uh, authentic guy. I think you can see that in his yeah. in his is is uh everything he every I mean he is the content king, right? So he makes content constantly. I got sure. to meet D Rock and I got to meet Tyler and all those guys that work with him. This is like Lou. recently, right? Like within the last uh, month. July, uh, yeah, July? end of July and August, yeah. Okay. And they are pushing sports cards. They've created a whole sports card branch with VaynerMedia. They call it Edison Sports. And uh, just shout out to those guys. I think they're doing, uh, there's a lot of loyalists in, in the community that don't like them. Um, I, I'm definitely in the middle of the fence. I think what they're doing is they're bringing a lot of attention to sports cards, getting a lot of college age, millennial age uh, individuals back into sports cards, realizing the investment potential in it. And he did something last year where he started investing in Giannis Antetokounmpo, you guys know mm-hmm. basketball, right? Uh, his PSA 10 rookie prism card, which is kind of like- Like when you ask questions like that, I'm just going to shake yeah, my yeah, head. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Have you heard I, the Greek I, I freak? The Greek freak. <laughs> the Greek yeah. freak, that might help, yeah. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah just continue to head nod. I'll just keep nodding. This is Michael's episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but- keep, um, keep, You guys keep talking. I'll be here. He uh, he bought a bunch of them, and the cards went from 150 200 By the end of the season, when the MVP, they were selling for $800. So he literally made a quarter million dollars, I think, just on investing in a card. And now again, was it market manipulation? I don't want to say that. I think he was just buying and telling people what he was buying. He's being transparent. Other people started buying and his card just went up. And so like you could have bought when Gary Vee was buying them 200 bucks and made 600 bucks in four months. You know what I mean? It's going to be like, uh, I mean, is he going to be like the Warren Buffett of that world where people like watch what Warren Buffett buys when it comes to the trading and stocks and then like, oh, because he's buying that. I like, Go buy, right. go buy, buy, Could buy. be, yeah, it could you be. Know? I mean, and again, the, the, like I talk about the regulation, why not? I mean, well, there, there's definitely people, and he's a good face. He loves sports. There's other guys like him as well in in the world. Um, StockX, you guys know that StockX, the big sneaker brand. They're like the sneakerhead sh- uh, website. Um, they're getting into sports cards. They're actually selling sports cards now on their website. Um, PSA 10 rookies. They've asked me to be one of the initial sellers to get involved with them, and so I'm going to be involved with that. And I just I'm watching and seeing this world grow into and permeate into our culture. Like it's no longer like like you go in our sports card shop and there's Bill, you know, he's opening a box and he's trying to buy your rookie card that you pull out of a pack for $10 or whatever. It's like an entire generation of people and they come in all shapes and sizes collectors do and they come from all backgrounds and all ages and I think that's why it resonates so well. Do you think, I mean, a lot of people, I know there's overlap, but are they more hobbyists or are they people that are actually looking for investment opportunities from a, they couldn't really care less about sports or sure. whatever the thing is, they're just looking for... Uh, the quick again, money, yeah, quick money. The, the the I think it's a mix. I think it's a mix. And of course, the, the sports authentic, you know, the collectors hate those people, right? They want to sure. burn them at the stake. Well, I, I look at it as a shop owner. I think it's great for the card market because it just brings more and more and more exposure to it, and it gets more and more people interested in. It. But there is a split between the two for sure. And then there's the fantasy guys who literally will come up and be like. I want my fantasy sports card team. You know what I mean? Or, right. Oh, sure. You know what I mean? Uh, somebody might come up and say, Josh Jacobs from the Raiders got me some touchdowns. Yeah. I was like, you got a rookie autograph of him? I want his card now, you know? Yeah, so the to NFL, put in there. The NFL had to take down the Chinese jersey markets exactly. because people would just buy jerseys of their fantasy team players. I mean, it's yeah. been the, the hobbyist and that is, is crazy how much how much money there could be there yeah. if, if the brand's done right. And like you said, there's some things that just aren't regulated, at least yeah. not yet. So Yeah, yeah. It's interesting. So, like, what's the most surprising thing that's happened since you've had your business? Oh, so, <clears throat> I was this little guy who was buying video game collections and didn't know what I was doing, and my wife's angry at me, right? So, that was when we first started. How old were you at this? So, uh, I, mean, I mean, I was, uh, we just got married. So, it was 2010, 2011. So, probably when I was like mid 20s, you know? Okay. And, um, at, Shout out to the wife. Yeah, shout out to Meredith. Yeah, she's, I mean, she's she's the rock. She, she, she puts up with all Here's the cool thing about Meredith, too. She's <laughs> like you in the sports card store. So she doesn't know a lot about sports. She, she didn't grow up me, you know, collecting cards, right? So it's awesome sometimes. Like, there'll be some really super hobby enthusiasts, and they'll just talk to her, and I just kind of watch like, it from the corner, like, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. this is really funny, because she's agreeing with them, and like, that's great, you know, and she's super positive and, and, and really nice. And I'll, I'll ask her after, like, do you have any idea what you just talked about? And she's like, nope. nope. <laughs> but <laughs> in the same way, I think customer service goes a long way to just to, just to listen people out sometimes. Yeah, you know, you know what's funny? Because, like, we've talked about that with my wife, Shannon. I think we've even talked about it on the podcast have, before. Yeah. You know, like, but, but my wife, Shannon, like... You, like she doesn't like to come in here and sell and stuff, but like there's been right. times where we're just like, hey, we need an extra hand, like come in this sure. week. And she comes in, she doesn't know anything about the specs of the scooter. She doesn't, know. Yeah. she just she just starts talking to people. Yeah. People come in, she's like, hey, how are you doing? Yeah. Oh, you're going to University 
of Florida? You know, what are you major? major? What are you majoring yeah. in? What year are you? Awesome. And she like from? establishes the relationship. Yeah. And she sells a she sells a scooter. Yeah. And it's just because she like she earns the earns the trust simply by like you know, focusing on like the relationship. And, yeah. I mean, she doesn't really know much about the scooters. Yeah. She's just like, Hey, this is, we're going to take care of you. Yeah. This is, she goes, you know, this is my husband's business. I'm just here to help out. Like if you have a problem, we're going to take care of you. <laughs> and she establishes that trust, but, yeah. but it's all right. Like she doesn't know anything about the scooters. That's the rapport that she builds with them is like, I mean, that's almost in a way it's like a brand. Right. And I was thinking about this when I was driving in, I don't know why I was just thinking about that idea of branding. And I was thinking, you know, Joe, what is what is branding? Like, what is what what does it mean to have a brand? And I thought, you know, say about what we've done. And branding to me, and I, and I don't have a background in marketing. I didn't grow. I didn't, I didn't come from that. I just, you know, I, I sold at garage sales as a little boy and put grab bags together for other kids and made ten and twenty bucks. And maybe that's what I, you know, how I learned the sales element. But I think branding it truly is you. Like I think you are you are the scooter shop. You know, you and your wife are this, and you sell that. It's not necessarily the scooters that are selling, it's you guys, you know? And I mean, that's maybe basic for some people, but I think more and more about that and the authenticity and, you know, caring about people, just listening, that's customer service and that's the brand, you know, that you have. There's a lot of branding in my world of sports cards that's shady and sleazy and they, they ream a kid who brings in a Mickey Mantle rookie card and it's not good, you know? Yeah. And I think one of the reasons why we may have been successful, I'll just throw it out there, is I think that we, we care about people and I think that we listen to people and we're not trying to, to, to beat you up on it. You know what I mean? I mean, people buy and sell stuff all the time and I'm very honest with them and I say, here's our margins we need to make. I'll show you what the stuff sold for. They have, sometimes they have no idea. Um, a lady came in uh, right before the national last year, asked me what the uh, kind of interesting thing was. She brought in all these baseball cards in the back of her trunk and she said her husband passed away and I was like, I'm sorry, ma'am. And she brings all these cards out. They had all water damaged. And I was like, honestly, there's like nothing really of value here. But I didn't say that to her. I took it in. She said, can you look at this and make a donation to this nonprofit? And I said, sure. And she goes, I don't know if this is worth anything. So underneath all of that, that had been crumpled and put underneath it, she pulls out a photo. And she says, Jamil, um, do you know who um, Hannes Wagner is? Okay, yeah, Hannes Wagner is um, like the one of the biggest names in baseball history. And she says, um, yeah, my grandfather played basketball with him at Carnegie. I said, okay. So she hands out a, she hands literally this photo that has now been ripped because it was under these boxes. She was using any value to this. So it's one of the only original Honus Wagner photos that he's ever been photographed in playing basketball, number one, because he was a baseball player. He played basketball in the off season. And she had no idea what it was. So I just said to her, I said, look, there's some value here. I don't know what it is. I'll take it to National. We sold for $1,800. I gave her 900 bucks and we, we split it. You know, it was one of these things where she was like so Dang. grateful for that. That's and cool. and again, we made on that, but we helped support her nonprofit. And she had no idea what that was, you know? Could I have bought that for 10 bucks or 20 bucks? Of course, of but course, I, right. I don't want to do that. Right. You know, and I think in business, you got to be very careful in that. Um, once you start doing that and you start going down that road of lack of business integrity, um, <laughs> people are going to find you out. Yeah, you know I, mean, I mean, brand is reputation. Absolutely. I mean, that's what, to me, that's what brand is. Like, sure, you know, I'm the, I started off as the scooter guy, right? Like, I've been the scooter <laughs> guy for 15 years and, yeah. and, you know, your reputation gets built based on, you know, the, the quality of work, the customer service, like all the things that you mentioned, right? And then, then, you know, started becoming the, the media, social media guy and started becoming the pot. Now, now it's like, podcast guy like yeah. literally I mean I sat down with yeah. with a couple of people today and was talking about podcasting and like I have to start the conversation with I mean I just want you guys to understand that I literally don't know anything about podcasting <laughs> I know how to speak into a microphone but, transparent but in they're that. like they're like what equipment do you use I'm like, I don't know I'm like dude we googled it microphone blog came up we ordered the stuff in the blog. It's the yeah. truth. And like you can come over and like pull the names off it if you want. Sure, sure. <laughs> like, I want, but uh, you know, and it, but it's the you know that starts to become the brand. Like I'm becoming the Woe GNV podcast guy. Yeah, Mike's you know the co-host of the Woe GNV, but you know we're the yes. podcast guys. So I mean, it's 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 interesting and and uh, you know I I know when it comes from to personal brand, I talk about this all the time. Like, you know when you build a personal brand, you know as you know as Colin Austin, like all of those things. When I focus on building my brand, Scooter Shop, you know, repaint our media company, podcast, all those things are going to benefit yeah. from building that brand. But the brand is your reputation, right? So. Right. I, I I don't even I've met you before, right? When I come in, we've been talking through Instagram and things like that. But I come, which in this I love, by the way. Can I just like really, really quick? Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Really, really quick, like. Because, and I know I've said this on the podcast before, so many people say you cannot build a relationship through social media. That's where the majority of mine probably, not, not 
that's where a lot of mine in 2019 have mm-hmm. have really started. Sure. Like I, you know, connect with people, follow them, uh, see what they're doing. I'm like, oh, this is really cool. Hey, what's up? You know, yeah. And like establish the relationship, and and now we're here, you know, podcasting together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah with hats on and having fun and Mike <laughs> smiling and yeah. I, I, I just, I just, I, I think about it like your brand is this build I look at this building and I see like I see excitement I see excitement I see these boards the colors the scheme almost matches the shirts that you guys came out with like I, I look at this place and I walk I've never even walked in this building but I know it's your brand and I know that's who you are and your personality is in this brand like that I feel like is something that people are missing in 2019 the authenticity mm. especially in our city uh, I mean people in our city will eat you up if you're not authentic. And I think if, if that's not who you are and whatever, and this is just a business thing all across the board, if you aren't authentic with people and you're not authentic in your business, then what are you? Like you're just faking your business and you're disgenuine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh, there's a lot of that where I think if you're getting into business for those reasons to just make money and you don't care about people or whatever, you definitely do it for the wrong reasons. I listen to you talk about nonprofits. Like, I mean, we need to be tied in directly with that. You know what I mean? Uh, Percy Harvin um, came to our opening. It was such a cool, you know, happening happenstance. I believe everything happens for reasons. He did our opening as an autograph signing event, June 23rd. And we were talking. I said, man, I just want to help kids and people in this area. I said, what, what do you want to do with your nonprofit? It's called No Mercy Percy Foundation. And he said, I just want to help kids and people as well. And just, uh, we got back from the National Sports Card event from Chicago uh, about four weeks ago. That following Saturday, we organized a event uh, with uh, friends, uh, friends of children of North Florida Central, North Central Florida. What we did is we did a backpack drive for kids with foster care. Percy came out. He hung out with none of these kids knew who he was. Brought, gave him backpacks. We called it Percy Packs. Was the event? Gave him backpacks, uh, supplies. We gave him packs of cards, Pokemon, sports cards. Then these, some of these kids had never had that. And BTW came out and uh, gave us packs of lunch. So we called it the Percy Pack event. We had like 50 kids in the store. Percy's sitting on the ground with these kids playing Pokemon with them, getting to know kids. It was like one of the most like beautiful things I'd th- seen in business because it was like, this this is helping people in a genuine way and we don't really care like what the cost is, but we're impacting. And think about those kids, right? Maybe one of those kids looks, I mean, one of the kids I remember, that same box I had pulled a Percy card out of it and was like, is that you, you know? And <laughs> autographed it for him. It was one of these cool, cool moments, yeah, you know, like really cool. you just create these memories for these kids. And that's what I hope our shop is. It's a place where you had those memories as a kid. I did as well, where there's genuine, authentic branding and people might remember Mealy Pops, you know, as that shop where it was safe and their kids had fun and maybe they learned a few things and got some good cards, you know? I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's it needs to be brought, I think, more to the attention is, is, is what are we doing in business beyond making money, right? Mm-hmm. So, of course. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's you know that's the purpose, right? Sure. Like, I, it's funny because and even talking about Gary, like Gary Vee and some of the things that I've heard him say, multiple, you know, it's like, well, your purpose can be money. It's just the wrong reason, and I don't think you're going to be nearly as successful with that being the purpose. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, the, those of us that have more purpose behind what we're doing every single day um, are the ones that are going to be truly fulfilled. Sure, right? And I just I believe that with all my heart. I said that to him at the uh, at the event. We actually we made a deal. We actually sold. I sold him cards, and it was funny. We've been working on this deal. He's big on big on basketball. Did you hustle him a little bit? Uh-huh. And he hustled <laughs> me back. He hustled me back a little bit too. It was good. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'll have to I'll have to ask him one day later maybe what what he thought about that. But um, uh, I I I saw him. You know, just the the element of of being there and selling. He actually said to a lot of people, like, I could just quit everything right now. I love this. I love selling cards and, and meeting people and doing this and buying and flipping it. Like, it does something to me, like nostalgic, and I just love this. That's and to the, hear the outside perspective is right? like, this is a big time CEO of a major corporation. What the heck is he doing here? Right, hustling baseball card, or right, basketball card, or whatever, exactly, you know, sports cards. Yeah, and it's funny. We he, I don't know if you know, Tops has a set of him now. Tops made cards of him. They put his autograph cards in the set. He's actually got these wine cards that have baseball players' autographs on them. So he has like uh, some of the rookies, Tatis Jr. and uh, some of these other guys. I, I like how I look at him when I start saying yeah, these yeah, names. Yeah, Sorry. I, know, yeah. I know who you're talking about. <laughs> That's fine. Just, I don't take yeah. offense. Sorry, I need, to, I need to not do that. Sorry, Colin. Um, <laughs> but uh, he, he made great this. folks. I'll see yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> he he, uh, he, um, he uh, made this set in, with Tops, and it's really cool to kind of just see his 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 stamp on it. Now, some people may not like that. That's fine. But at least he's doing something he likes in his business and he's putting it out there. So, I mean, whether he gets crucified for it or not, like at least he's doing something that he likes and he enjoys, right? Well, and I saw somebody open 
opening like one of the, the packs that he has because I guess he has his own like right. golden ticket in yeah. there or something. And if you pull one, then you can go sit with him in a box at a he had like game five or of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, <laughs> and then uh, you know, and I saw somebody who reposted the video like, oh, I, like I pulled it, and Gary V like congratulated him, and said, so are you gonna resell it or are you coming? Yeah, you know, and like, and it's fact, it's funny because Gary V just like respects that. You might, the guy might actually like hustle it flip, and yeah. like flip it. Well, yeah, and, the same thing with the shoes. Know, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It's I mean exactly. It's just super interested. He's in, into that game and stuff, and it's it, I don't know. It's it's really really cool. But the guy definitely lives, you know, his passion doing what he loves, whether or not sure. it makes money well, sense yeah. from a financial standpoint or not. Yeah, you know, and that's really really cool. And yeah. you're a Cardinals fan. My my favorite Gary V story is the Colton Wong story. I, I don't know if you know that. Uh, he he found that this I guess a guy that he wanted to you know sell his uh, media services to the CEO of this company had tweeted something about a Cardinals chief, game. Yeah, as a chief marketing officer. Yeah, he tweeted something about this Cardinals game that Colton Wong was his favorite player, um, and so Gary just starts like researching you know Colton Wong yeah. and the Cardinals and stuff like that, and then starts DMing this uh, chief marketing officer. He's just tweeting with him. Yeah, or like, I mean it's yeah. a story like he's just going. You know, he's talking about like establishing. You know, not you know. Jab, 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 right hook. Right, you know what I mean. Like, books, like don't, yeah, don't like go in for the the kill right away. He like, t- you know, basically starts following this chief marketing officer of the company, goes back and forth, just in tweets, picks up, you know, sees that the guy's like just like listening. He's yeah. just listening. Sees that the guy's talking about Cameron Wong and like then then Cameron Wong. You heard that? Yeah, that was good. That was good. Keep it going. Keep it going. Cameron. And, Cameron. And, then, and then like. <laughs> Why, what am I doing here? This is great. <laughs> I love it more than you, I yeah, promise. Because, because I beat up on him so much. I beat up on him so much. But um, what ended up happening? Oh, Gary basically, because of that, picked, picked him up on his fantasy baseball team. Yeah. Right? And then messaged this guy. I was like, I hope you're right, man, because I like picked this guy up on my fantasy yeah. baseball team. And that established the relationship. Right. And weeks later, you know, Gary says that it could, it led to them doing like a $4 million deal. It's like some crazy, <laughs> crazy deal right? between a CEO, yeah. CMO, and, you yeah. know, they finally c- connected. And, you know, it was, it was jab, jab, jab. And, you know, whether or not it would actually have led to something, he doesn't right. know, but he just gets on there and establishes the relationship yeah. and provides value. I mean, it's, it's cool. It's it's neat. But Is he close to buying the Jets yet? No, no, no. He's it, not. They didn't look so good. But, week but he'll, one he'll, he'll tell you. He'll tell you that he's super patient, man. Yeah, yeah. He's super patient. So I just I, don't know. I can't wait to see him as the owner of the Jets. It's gonna happen. It, one it, day. it will. It, yeah. Actually, it, it will be super cool. Yeah. It will be super yeah. cool when that day happens. Yeah, yeah. Because like when he says it, like you just believe it. Yeah. I'm just like, dang, dude. Like this guy's just like so laser focused and. And then it's funny because he doesn't seem laser focused, right? You know, you know he's laser focused on that, yeah. and then he doesn't seem like because he's, <laughs> yeah. he's got, you know, this media company, yeah. media company, baseball <laughs> cards, wine, like you know, it seems all over the place. But I think one thing you want and getting to watch, you know, people like that, you know, I think sometimes you and I, we get an you know, you know, entrepreneurs start to think, I need to be that, right? And I'll be honest, like I don't think that guy sleeps. Like and, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, he's messaged us in our our message groups at like three a.m. And I'm looking, and then he says at six a.m. He's talking about sports cards, and I'm thinking like, do you sleep at all? Like you know what I mean? But I, that's not the lifestyle that I want necessarily, right? But at the same time, I can still apply some of those principles and grind or do whatever I need to do uh, in my business model. And I think sometimes I meet people and they they look at that and they say, well, I need to be like that, and they try and mirror it. And I'm like, well, you're not being authentic now. Now you're being right. someone else. And in business, if you don't have your touch on things, right? If you don't have, like for me in our store, I might spend more time talking to people in the store uh, about what they like or their school, like you, you know, maybe you're, like your wife said, you know, what's, what are they majoring at UF? Just just getting to know them, and they may only spend five bucks in the store once or once or twice a couple, you know, a couple times a month, or they may not even, they may just want to come and hang out. But I think you showing them that you care and you know, being there and just being someone who cares about your brand and cares about what you sell, cares about your customers, right? Investing in customers uh, versus investing in inventory. Right? I hear that all the time. Like, I need this inventory, I need that. In my world, it's like nonstop because something that's hot literally tomorrow, Wednesday, will not be hot Friday, which will not be <laughs> fraught, hot the next week. Mm. And if I buy too much of it and I don't sell through, like. I could be in, I could be out, I could be down 10, 20% off margin. And just, it's crazy how some of these things work. So um, 
I think the, the, the big line for me is just that, just caring and being authentic in what you do and be yourself. I mean, your brand is your brand. You know yeah. what I mean? Our brand is our brand. Mealy Pops is our brand. Let people. I hope people know what that is. And we go to the national things. People will say to me like, "Here's a guy from Croatia, New Zealand, uh, Nebraska, Alaska. Oh, you're Mealy Pops." They don't know my first name. They don't know anything about me, but they know that that brand or they know you know what we represent. Yeah. Okay. So, so where did that? Come? I mean, everybody's listening now. They're probably like wondering. Where really, does, pops. Yeah. 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 Where did the name come from? Yeah. So my name's Jamil, J A M E E L. And as a kid, I grew up. I had all sorts of weird nicknames: J Mo, J Money, um, Mel. But Mealy was one that people call me a lot. Mealy, I guess Jamili, Jamil, Mealy, whatever. As a kid, so I played soccer, I played tennis. My my uh, my mom is from England. My mom, she's English. Um, she's uh, I, I grew. I drink tea every morning still to this day. And my dad is from Trinidad. So I mean, I have this crazy. Just I'm a mutt no matter what, you know. But I'm an American. I was born here. Um, my uh, my mom uh, just loved soccer so she would call me Mealy all the time when we played soccer and one of my my family members this is my uncle whenever I score a goal or do something well he would say pops like Mealy pops and I don't know why it just stuck and then my mom would call me that another my dad and growing up I'd hear that more and more so then you know you're cool in middle school you need your cool AOL instant messenger you know what I mean so I, I think I signed up Mealy pops I was the only one and so then it, it transitioned into you know Mealy pops and your email and you know all these other things and when we started this LLC, uh, I just said, why don't we call our group the Mealy Pop Shop? We're just an online thing. We're doing it out of the house, our, our side hustle. It's fun, it's got a little ring to it. And then now I have to live and die by it because yeah. now we have a brick and mortar and I have this giant logo on the side and you know, that's, <laughs> you know, it is what it is. So it's odd and, and I get that. But one thing I found in our businesses, I didn't call it Gator Sports Cards or Gainesville's you know, dugout or something like that. Yeah. It's got a uniqueness to it. Yeah, and it the niche element of it, I think, helps me so that we're not just selling sports cards. You know, 30% of our business model is not sports cards. It's memorabilia, it's, it's Funko Pops, it's Pokemon, it's Yu-Gi-Oh! It's these other kids that come in and I've learned this whole generation of culture, which I think is truly millennial, right? I think that's kind of that range from late 90s to maybe mid 2000s, 2005, 2006, that's like that range. And there's people, this town is filled with 70,000 students, right? So I can communicate with them on that, that level. Um, and I think it's helped our brand even more so. Yeah, my MySpace name was calling all the girls. <laughs> <laughs> James, James pulled up a good picture when we were doing the photo shoot that I was like, this is the caption. It's calling all the Colin, girls. C-O-L-L-I-N. Yeah. C-O-L-L-I-N. Oh, yeah. Calling all the girls. Did it work? <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca's, <out. laughs> Rebecca's like, oh my goodness. <laughs> hey, man. Uh, let's just move on. Yeah, let's, just move I mean, on. Like, let's not even touch it. I don't, yeah. <laughs> on, so, so you brought some stuff with you. Sure. Man. I mean, like, I so what'd you bring? Stuff. Like, what'd you bring? So I gave you guys a box, uh, and that's some gifts there. If, if, if Mike, you want to look at that's just oh, all that's Gator gifts? autograph cards. Yeah, Gator cards in there. What? That little right card. There. And you can keep them or give them out or give them to people that come through here just to enjoy it. I threw some Pokemon packs oh, in there for your kids. Shit, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, they can enjoy that. You can have the Pokemon ones, and I'll take the Gator now. Just stop it. So I brought some. This is like the big. My kids will love this. It's not the big, big dog stuff but it's better stuff and I'll just kind of show you some stuff and we can talk a little bit about this because I think this can help understand the market as well for kind of cards in general um, so we got about 10 minutes yeah yeah so, so what do you want to see what do you want to see sports Pokemon football baseball basketball just a little know. sample of all of it yeah, alright cool a little sample so um, here I'll pass for everybody this one who's over listen, for everybody who who's that listening is. for everybody who's listening this is Babe Ruth man for everybody who's listening you're going to have to go check out the, the video podcast because this is going to be legit uh, check that out that's a legit authentic Babe Ruth autograph uh, wow. big cut bold it looks like it was signed a couple days ago um, nice. probably worth eight to ten thousand dollars no um, way. yeah here's your boy this is uh, <laughs> it's in his back pocket already <laughs> how many scooters can I get for that is what I want to know that's cool yeah I, that's really cool so there's uh, there's your boy uh, Belichick that's his rookie card autograph flip it over on the back he looks like a four year old signed it hold on that's his legit his signature. legit autograph when he was a coach with the if Browns I, if I hold this up oh do it yeah over here. yeah yeah alright you see that we're Zoom, that zooming out. in, yeah. You can get the front of it if I do that. That's really cool. Belly. So, so what's that worth? A grand. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is the most iconic card. Ken Griffey Jr. Ken Griffey Jr. What, 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 what brand is this? Let's see if Mike uh, remembers. That, 
the diamond logo is upper deck. Ah, yes, nice. 1989 rookie card, uh, Ken Griffey Jr. This is a PSA nine. It means it's a um, the card means it's a nine out of ten. The sweetest swing in all baseball. There you go. Nine out of ten. Yeah, so it's graded by a company that's reputable, and that's actually where the market now is is grading cards. So they look at the condition of these cards. Um, that's a PSA nine. A PSA ten that's worth like six hundred bucks, but a PSA nine is like hundred bucks, um, hundred fifty bucks. Uh, Mixing it up here. This is uh this is the Pokemon world. This is Charizard. I always tell people Charizard is the Mickey Mantle of uh, sports cards or Pokemon cards. That's a Shadowless card, 96. Uh, it's not the first edition. If that was a first edition and it was a PSA 10, it'd be worth $45,000. Um, that's the last oh, sell. Hold on, hold on. Say this one more time. If that was a PSA 10 on the front okay, and it was not a 10 and it had a little first edition symbol on it, that'd be worth 45. The last one's over $44,000. No way. That's a so card that came one out. Worth? That one's a PSA 9 and it's not a first edition. It's a Shadowless. It's worth about $2,000. But just to show like the world of cards, right? Dude, like that's crazy. a card that came out in 96, you know? That's not too long ago. Um, and it's super it's, cool. It's just worth a lot of money. Here's a, I like this card too, because you can just see how, old, how young he was in the suit he's wearing and how ridiculous it looks. That's a LeBron James uh, top rookie card, uh, first edition. Uh, it's a 9.5. That's a Beckett 9.5. So Beckett grades cards now, Mike. Okay. Um, and they are a big player in the world of grading. Um, so that's probably worth 500 bucks, 600 bucks. I got more here too. This guy's going to the Hall of Fame next year. This this card he knows too, I'm sure. You know that card, Mark? That's a 93 Jeter top Jeter. rookie card. Wow. Derek Jeter. <laughs> Number two. Yeah. If you've ever seen uh, Will Ferrell's uh, Boston <laughs> skit, you go go look it up on YouTube. Derek Jeter. And he just like <laughs> says that 80 times. That's a PSA 10, so it's a perfect card, right? According to their measurements. And it's uh, it's worth about 100, 150 bucks. But like that card, he gets also, inducted to the Hall of Fame. PSA stands for what? Professional, um, professional Sports Authenticators. Okay. They do comics and stuff. They grade cards. Shows you how much I know. Yeah. yeah. It's good. The red label. I'm, I'm, trying, to clear, I'm trying to clarify this yeah. for all of our you listeners the out there that have no idea what we're talking about. You're doing great. And uh, so I brought. <laughs> also something here too a little small sample this is um this is a baseball that's been authenticated by a company called JSA so JSA is an autograph authentic company so that's actually what's called Mickey a mantle a pearl a ball it's a very white clean ball Mickey Mantle yeah, autograph baseball really really cool um really hard to find Mickey Mantle everybody knows his name from baseball full core um dang so there's just a few I didn't want to show everything there's so what's something like that worth um, that ball, because it's so clean and the autograph looks so nice, probably about eight hundred to a thousand dollars. Yeah, but um, some of the other ones that cool. you find that are you know four hundred five. There's a lot of fake Mickey Mantles too. I wanted to give you guys a couple Gator things while yeah. I was here. So uh, I, love I love Gator things, man. So for those, are you, you hyped for the season? Man, come on! I'm loving the football season. I mean, the guy put our faith in Felipe. We got to trust in him. You know I what agree. I mean? So much hate right now spewed yeah. by us, nation. Gator. So at the time of recording, we're two and zero. Yeah, yep. we're going to Kentucky this weekend. With their quarterback, okay. so hopefully by the time, yes. by, hopefully by the time this like this, is awesome. this airs. 3-0. 3-0, 4-0. Then we get Tennessee. Oh, we That's going to be beautiful. Oh, yeah, what a gosh. massacre I hope that is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is um, Jordan Scarlett. He's probably one of the biggest uh, names that came out of the last class for the Gators. And he did a signing in our store. So That's... I want to give this guy to you. He, Dude, yeah, thank there's you. a Jordan thank Scarlett. It's a JSA Authentic, so it's legit. I didn't go scribble that on the ball before we started. <laughs> Um, so that's cool. You guys can give that away or keep it in the store, whatever you guys want to do. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to say the first nonprofit to reach out to me and you need a silent auction item. Perfect. Hit me up at Colin Austin on Instagram. Boom. And I'm going to give you another one that might be cool for uh, something you might want to do as well. So this is a, a Percy Harvin autographed JSA authentic helmet, uh, old school, or this is the speed helmet. But what's unique about this is you can see on it, he wrote his uh, little insignia, No Mercy Percy. Uh, so here's a cool way to talk about branding and helping people out. So Percy came to me, we were talking about autographs and I said, Percy, I said, why don't you inscribe your um, your foundation on helmets and just use that for your foundation? So anything that you ever do with No Mercy Percy will be unique to that. So he did, and so he's only that's very unique. There's only like probably 20 or 30 helmets that have that inscription, and he won't sign that on anything but for his foundation. So that's cool. Um, so you guys can keep that. Very and, cool. Um, We're gonna I'll have to keep like we'll probably have to keep that for like our shelf. We're gonna do like a future shelf in the back behind the it. podcast yeah. whenever we get our own studio. We're, yeah. we're like collecting all sorts of stuff. See, you're a collector. You really are. 
You said you yeah. didn't collect. It's funny, like I'm collecting stuff from businesses all over the city. It's you know, love it. Funny, funny story is like so. So many of the businesses that have been on the podcast give us like shirts. Yeah, like they're like their shirt. <laughs> they become like my favorite shirt. I, like, I like walk around town, like you know, <laughs> walking billboard. I'll, like the other day, like literally, I was walking around in uh, Opus T-shirt, like Opus Coffee T-shirt, and I had three people ask me, "Oh, do you work for Opus?" Yeah, yeah. I'm like, can you give me no. a discount on Opus? <laughs> <laughs> so that's funny. Yeah. Um, and I just I brought this. You guys can have fun with this maybe another time. This is a this is some kind of stuff we sell in the store. Like this is a Panini product that came out for the Gators, and there's ten packs of cards in here, and you're guaranteed an autograph or a jersey card in the in the box, as well as a bunch of Gator cards. So like, there's a lot of creative ways the market's changed, Super um, cool. where it's a really catered to whatever you want to collect you could get. I mean, if you watch Stranger Things, Tops makes a brand and you can get an 11 autograph. If you like football and you want a Baker Mayfield rookie card, there you go. If you do poke, I mean, it's literally for anybody out there. And I encourage people, come on out to the shop if you want to talk sports or collecting or investing. Uh, we're definitely uh, always willing to do that. Yeah, so what's like, what would you say is your most prized card or memorabilia or whatever you got? It's a good question. I mean, so when I decided to, build this shop and create a brand and you know take the step, I kind of had to move stuff to start the business, right? I didn't want to be an under. So we sold a few things. One of the things I probably wish I could have back is the George Washington autograph that I had. Um, that was a PSA cut, uh, legitimate first president George Washington autograph. Um, that's gone. I sold some other basketball cards that I'd hold on to. I have a couple that are uh, in security deposit. Uh, Michael Jordan, dual signed Tiger Woods piece that I really like right now. It's uh, he, Michael Jordan doesn't sign a lot of stuff uh, because of licensing things and I could bore you with that talk with LeBron James and him. But um, there's uh, some other stuff that I've just had that I just like over the years. I, I did sell a, a Pokemon card last year, $15,000, a Charizard, one of the similar ones that you had. I mean, it's just crazy the market and what we have come through. Uh, we had a Mickey Mantle uh, signed. I had it just recently. It was a uh, Gator um, program from the 1970s when George Steinbrenner used to bring the Yankees to play spring training here at in Florida Field. Uh, not at the Swamp, but at the, the baseball stadium. But it was really poorly conditioned in the 70s. So there was like lumps in the field. So they only did it for two years. And uh, I actually have a Gator signed um, scorecard with Mickey Mantle's autograph on it. So that was pretty cool. That's cool. Um, there's stuff like that that comes through all the time. Well, very neat, man. This has yeah. been fun. Mike, any last I sports mean, questions I, my or what you got? just goes so far, like... <laughs> It's just in a thousand different places. I could talk sports forever, especially when it comes to collectibles and, and stuff like that. All right, so, of, so, well, definitely save a couple for the side yeah. hustle. You know, we got our, we got the side hustle for our Patreon people. Patreon. <laughs> so, like, help us out, subscribe. That All that money goes to funding the podcast. Love it. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. What you got? Yeah, one more thing? No, we're uh, good. We're we'll good? save it for the side hustle. All right, we're going to save yeah. it for the side Uh-oh. hustle. Watch the side hustle. Save it for the hustle. Watch, watch the side watch hustle. Um, let me just know what's happening. Is there anything, anything else? Well, let's, how about this? Where's the Where's the store located? Yeah. Website, all that kind of stuff. Thanks, man, yeah. So eBay, eBay. Name? Yeah, yeah. So our um, our store is actually the old Santa Fe bookstore. Okay. Um, remember that on 39th, on 39th Avenue? 39th. All the yep. crazy uh, uh, sketches and stuff they had on the windows. Um, so we're right off 39th Avenue here in Gainesville. If you're uh, right on the set, if you get off the interstate, you could probably throw a football and hit our building. It's right behind Walgreens and Sunny's right there, uh, 3700 Northwest 39th Avenue. And uh, we have a shot. We have 2,000 square foot. It's filled with all sorts of fun stuff. Come on anytime. We're open right now, Wednesdays to Sundays, but we are looking to open up on Tuesdays and uh, later on in the fall. So it'll be Tuesday to Sunday eventually. And we also do something that I didn't get a chance to talk about too much, but we do something called breaks. And it's a, a new way of collecting. So when Mike and I used to buy baseball cards, you bought in packs and you would hope to get a, a card or whatever. And you'd get a bunch of cards maybe you don't want. So we do something now that's really revolutionized this, this whole game of sports cards where you might open up 12 boxes, which is a case of one product and people will buy into team spots. So they might buy the Braves, they might buy the Cardinals, they might buy the Yankees, and they sell through a break that way. And what happens is we stream it live. We have this, that we do this every Wednesday night and Friday night on Facebook. Um, and what they do is actually we open the cards live and you take that stuff home, whatever you get for the team you bought. So you get just what you pay for. But the crazy thing is, we might, like a week ago, some guy, we did a basketball break, he got a Zion autograph. He sold for $5,000 the next day. Damn. So things like that happen where there's big 
pulls as well, but you're also getting cards that you like as well. So that's a new way, it's called sports card breaks, where you break down an entire case of cards. You do it in about 45 minutes, it's all live, people are watching, it's a lot of fun. Is and it like in a private group, or is this like through your like so we have public a, page? Or so like the public page we have is on Facebook, you can find us, just look up Mealy Pop Shop on um, But is that where you're doing the live breaks? Or? So we don't do it, we have a, 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 a private group, you have to apply kind of to get into it, and the reason why we do that is because we were having a lot of problems with like lots of people joining in our live feeds that had no idea what we are doing, they're like, yeah. hey, do you wanna buy this, and you know, all these things, and I'm like, all right, there's a break, I need to focus on, there's all these things going on. So you can just find us, it's, it's Mealy Pops Breaks on Facebook. Uh, we're gonna eventually dual stream on YouTube. Uh, Instagram, Shop Mealy Pops, Twitter, Shop Mealy Pops, and uh, those are the biggest platforms. And something that I didn't tell you, Colin, is we may be doing a podcast down the line, so a yeah. uh, sports card specific podcast. So looking forward to that. I, I want you, you on you, as a yeah, guest you, uh, because I want you, can you to have Mike <laughs> because he obviously knows way more about sports than I do. We'll have uh, Colin on to open up some uh, some, yeah, some, he can some do sports the cards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Rebecca, Rebecca, she <laughs> let it out. She's over uh, in the corner. Just she laughing. let it out. <laughs> I gotta have yeah, fun. Yeah, you, you guys. Yeah, and we have eBay. Yeah. You can find us. Uh, our, our eBay ID is literally Mealy Pops. We have a, a website, shopmealypops.com. So we're on every digital platform. Just Google Mealy Pops and you'll You're find everything. Find it. Dude, it's, uh, you know, it's so interesting. I mean, we could have like, like dove way into that way more, but just like the, like you said, like the digital age, right? And the fact that people can like get into these private Facebook groups yeah. and like see this stuff happening. It reminds me, you know, of Brooke Newell in one of the very, very first episodes where she's like in a private group and selling clothes. And yeah. like, I'm just like, dude, Huge. it's like fascinating. Huge. So we'll, we'll do that and uh, we'll do a follow up. How about that? Yeah, no, oh, definitely. I look, I look forward to that. That's, that's going to be a huge fun part of all this. Yeah. <laughs> when we'll, you guys like, are doing great, down. man. It's awesome what you guys are doing for Gainesville. So thanks. And no, man, thanks. For, awesome. Thanks for coming on. Like, yeah. we really appreciate it. And this is thanks for the gifts. Yeah, like, this is awesome. like, I mean, yeah. especially the $10,000 Babe Ruth card. Though, oh, I yeah. Like, <laughs> I thought you already pocketed that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that was awesome. Really yeah. appreciate that. That's going to help. <laughs> that's definitely going to fund the podcast. That's definitely. So, yeah, yeah. We appreciate Mealy Pop Shop closed for no, no longer in business. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> go see uh, Colin. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Hey, man, thanks again for yeah, being man. here. Appreciate you guys. World, thank you so much for listening. This is the WHOA GNV Podcast, the podcast bringing you businesses and individuals that make it go whoa. whoa. We will see you later. <laughs>